Shooting USA is brought to you by SnapSafe and the full line of affordable security products from modular safes to lockboxes. Save 15% with code SUSA15 at SnapSafe.com. Welcome again to the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. An interesting factoid, some of our more popular videos see as many as 75 or 80% of you are not subscribed to our channel. If you like the content you're seeing, please honor us with a subscription. And if you're interested in full-length current episodes of Shooting USA after it airs on the network, there's a link in this video's description to our Vimeo channel. Now, here's the content you came to see. Throughout history, wartime always creates advancements in firearms design. The question is always the same, how do we bring more firepower to the battle? Well, one of those answers from the past was the flintlock with seven barrels, a handful to manage that's now one of history's guns. The sound and fury of a battle at sea. The age of the fighting sails. For an admiral of the Royal Navy, victory came in boldness, in boarding his enemy and capturing the prize in close quarter combat on deck. And this magnificent naval firearm of the late 18th century was built to accomplish that task. A seven barrel smoothbore flintlock the British knock volley gun. It was used by the Royal Navy and the purpose of the gun was it was still supposed to be used by like a big shotgun and you'd either fire it from the four tops which are the like the crow's nests on the top of the uh, the mass of the ship and it was to be used during uh, you know close quarters work you could also shoot it on the deck. History books describe the knock's fearful discharge. The gun does weigh 15 pounds, so that helps soak up the recoil somewhat. But uh, when it uh, touches off, you know you've actually fired something. It's, it's pretty spectacular. The knock volley gun was introduced in 1779, named for Henry Knock, whose London-based company built the firearm for a quarter of a century. The right side barrel carries the maker's mark, H. Knock. And on the lock, the crown and initials GR, for Georgius Rex, King George of England. Initially, Nock produced 49 of these seven-barrel muskets and within five years built 500 more. But from the start, there was a predictable problem. The recoil was so horrendous, nobody wanted to even come near the darn thing. It was, it was absolutely punishing. Punishing even in this day. Gary is, after all, firing a volley of seven shots. So the Brits decided uh, with you know, a certain amount of discretion that if you make the balls a little smaller so that um, they're not fitting the bore that tightly and you reduce the powder charge, uh, it will become manageable and that's what they did. <laughs> and that's what Gary does too. Gary is loading his knocked volley gun in much the same way British sailors did 200 years ago. Basically what I've done is make up proper paper cartridges, you know, of the period. It's got about a 40 grain powder charge and there's a 454 ball in there, which is quite, quite a bit smaller than the, than the bore size on this thing. He tears off the end of the paper cartridge, pours the black powder down the barrel, then pushes the round ball in behind it. The paper holds the ball in place since it is smaller than the 52 caliber bore. Push the round balls down with a ramrod, prime the pan with a little powder, and the knocked gun is ready to shoot, much like any muzzle loading musket. But remember, seven barrels. By the way, they don't all go off at once, they're connected one to the other by a channel. So basically they fire in rotation with the last barrel firing uh, the final shot. However, it happens so fast that uh, it looks like one shot. Looks like one, but recoils like seven. Well, it, uh, it speaks with authority. There's no question about that. Let's go down and, uh, and see how that Frenchman or Spaniard fared. 
close inspection of Gary's target shows the enemy didn't fare too well. Well, that's, that's pretty impressive. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six balls all in a lethal area. I mean, the, the, the guy is absolutely, uh, there's no way he would have survived that blast. Uh, here's, oh, here's, and the other, but look at this, the other bullet hit way down here. So the gun's a smooth bore, so you never know where, where the bullets are gonna go. But uh, that's pretty impressive. I would not want anybody uh, aiming at me with that thing. Let's take a look at the instant replay one more time from 25 yards. Seven barrels and six lethal shots. Uh, that's <laughs> that's uh, that that is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal, yes. But the volley gun did not live long in His Majesty's service. There was concern about the time it took to load, and worries the muzzle blast might set fire to the rigging of a ship. But still, it's a fascinating uh, piece of. Uh, of, of uh, firearms history, and it works very, very well. Though let's not forget that wicked recoil. And that's a wrap as far as I'm concerned on this son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, that's a wrap, Gary. Thanks for the history on one of the ideas on the way to modern firearms. But is it possible the knock volley gun could have inspired Dr. Gatling's gun a century later? The knock was one of the first, but it would not be the last multi-barrel solution for more firepower. For the rugged, the style, the untamed, and the wild. For the trades, the trees, the mountains, and the free. Reimagined. Reengineered. Reborn. Well, you've made it to the end of another Shooting USA video on YouTube, and for that, we thank you. It does help the channel if you subscribe, like, and comment, and that will help us keep the content coming.